Welcome to worship. Today is our 31st week of doing virtual and mailed copies of worship. Today we're going to continue our sermon series called Unraveled, which is from a sanctified art. In our unraveling, sometimes life surprises us with unexpected joy, love, and hope, with a new beginning that we could have never imagined before. Sometimes we need God to unravel us, for we long to be changed. God leads us in that spiraling, unraveling our plans, and also unraveling us, and makes us into something new. What happens when our dreams become unraveled? Where is God in that process? Let us worship together by joining together for our call to worship as we begin our time. Join me for the call to worship that you'll find on your screen. Sometimes life takes us where we don't expect. Sometimes God takes us where we don't expect. In worship, we gather to get in touch with God's bigger narrative. In worship, we gather to expand our hearts. So let us worship the God of unending surprises. Let us worship the God of love. joys and concerns. Let us pray for comfort for the family of Dwayne Bark, who lost his three-month battle with COVID. Let us all pray for Chuck Hines, who's Josh's grandpa, who is fighting for his life also against COVID. Let us pray for Ruby Moan. Let's continue to pray for her as she recovers from having her aortic valve replaced. Let us also pray and continue to pray for Mary Likes, who had her shoulder replaced and is now at um, a place in Platteville. From last week, I know you received the addresses both for Ruby and for Mary. So if you haven't already, please send them a card. Also, let's pray for Evelyn Mueller, who was in the hospital as well. Let us now pray together. God, you hear our hearts cry. You weep with us when our hearts feel broken and heavy. Come to us this day and comfort us with your sweet spirit. Be with those that we have lifted up by name. Creator God, being faithful has never been easy. You asked Noah to build a ship. You asked the Israelites to plant gardens and build homes while in exile. 
You ask the prophets to speak challenging truths. You ask the disciples to drop their nets and follow you. And you ask us to love bigger than society wants to. Being faithful has never been easy, and as a result, we often miss the mark. Forgive us for holding tightly to human-made plans. Forgive us for the times that we say no to you so that we can say yes to ourselves. Unravel the grip that we have on our agenda so that we may make room for you. Now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you to everyone that has been upholding their membership vows of supporting their church with their prayers, their presence, their gifts, their service, and their witness. If you have been meaning to, but just haven't been able to give, now is the time to give to your church. We are in our fourth quarter of the year, and I'd like to end the year strong financially in all three churches. Please send your check of tithing to the charge office in Livingston, or to your personal financial secretary in your church, or you can always give safely and securely on our website at www. Dot LMC, UMC, dot org. Our scripture this morning is from the Old Testament, Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. From 2001 to 2013, uh, the year that we mo moved to Livingston, I moved approximately 17 times. Seven years of schooling with uh, moving about a couple times each year. Internships, working at camp for two summers, moving to Madison. And when we moved to Madison, the parsonage wasn't quite ready yet uh, for us. So we moved, uh, or I moved two other times before moving into the parsonage while living there. And then seven years ago, we moved to Livingston. That's a lot of moving across 13 years. I found though that any place can become home once I have my suitcases, my boxes and totes unloaded and also organized. But most of all, my clothes needed to be in drawers or hung up and I needed to have pictures of my family and friends either sitting on a desk or a dresser or hung up on the walls. I feel like the people in our scripture for today those living in exile in Babylon are still living out of boxes, not fully committing to their new location and their new community. They're just holding their breath, waiting for the exile to end, just making do rather than making a life. We know by reading other parts of the scripture of Jeremiah that this exile lasted for 70 years. How long were the Israelites in exile at the time that the prophet Jeremiah sent this message, um, that God sent this message, message through Jeremiah to the people in exile? We don't know. Probably at least a couple decades. They were living, but they were not flourishing. They longed to go home. They wanted to go back to Jerusalem because they believed that God lived in Jerusalem only. Yet they had been sent into exile. They had been sent into Babylon, which is present-day Iraq. The exile robbed them of their community, their beloved homes, their professions, and even their perceived proximity to God. 
On the screen, you will see here a map of the Babylonian Empire. Jerusalem is on the left, and it's also underlined, and Babylon is on the right, also underlined. So by looking at this map, you can get an idea of how far the Israelites were forced to move away from home. In the midst of their exile, they had heard from other false prophets that they might be able to go home soon, and they were holding on to that kind of false hope. But here comes Jeremiah, God's prophet, and, and gives these people a message. A message that I'm sure that they probably didn't want to actually hear. If we define exile as living in a state of unrest, we too can relate to those in our scripture. We might consider living in exile when we can't or shouldn't leave our homes because of COVID. Anxiety and depression can feel like exile when our psychological state is not in harmony. When visiting older members of our congregations in assisted or nursing homes, they oftentimes tell me how, they much, how much they want to go home. I think we could classify this feeling as that they're feeling that they're living in exile. Or we feel like we have been a failure because we're not where we thought we were going to be at this stage of our lives. That is exile too. I've been thinking often about family farms, that how at an exponentially alarming rate they're being forced to sell their third or fourth or even fifth generation farmland and also their cattle. That is exile. I've heard from some of the older generations, um, generation people here in our congregations, as they bemoan the fact that the church isn't as it once was. I've heard comments also about our community, like our town isn't what it used to be. I don't even know half the people that live here. It's almost as if the world has continued to turn and times have changed, yet ourselves and our churches have not evolved. Our present day might feel like to some living in exile because we long for a time that was 40, 50, or even 60 years ago. So where is God in our exile? Where is God when our dreams and our plans unravel? The people in exile in Babylon thought that God was only in Jerusalem, not with them in exile. They thought that God had left them. They thought that there was no hope, no future. Their dreams of a normal life had unraveled. And now what? In comes this message from God. Build houses so you can live comfortably. Marry and have children so you can multiply. Plant gardens so you can eat. Essentially, God is saying, settle in, friends. Get comfortable because we're going to be here for a bit. Unpack those boxes. Put your clothes away. Hang those pictures on the wall. You need to make this place your home. In addition, God says, seek the peace and the prosperity of the city. Don't just huddle up and be with people like you. Go out. Get to know other people. Get to know your non-Israelite neighbors. Bring them a cake or whatever the sweet of the day was back then. Help the city thrive and have success. For when there is success as the greater whole, you too will have success personally. And most importantly, God says that I am in all of this. I am in the building and the cultivating of the ground, in the growth, in the reproduction of human life. I am in the conversations and I am in the city's growth and success. When we find ourselves feeling like we are in exile, when we feel like our dreams are unraveling or have unraveled, when we feel unrest, when we feel unsettled, when we feel like this was not my plan, when we feel like throwing our arms up in frustration, when we feel like we don't know our neighbors 
And we long for a time when our church was whatever it is, fill in the blank, full, more uh, vibrant. Or a dream of church as it used to be in 1960. We first need to acknowledge the pain to God. And then second, do the best that we can with the situation that we are in. God told the Israelites to stop just making do, but rather to make a life. And that is our call for us today, too. So what does that look like? When we are at home because of COVID, so, a, so is everyone else. How can we be a blessing to others? Give your friend or relative a call. Write a card to your neighbor that perhaps you don't even know very well. Write a card to those that are in a nursing home or assisted living. If anxiety and or depression has us feeling in exile, seek professional help. There is no shame in acknowledging our mental health and putting it as a priority in getting the help that we need. If you are in a nursing home or have uh, in an assisted living, how can you be a blessing to others? Simply by befriending a nurse or a CNA. And maybe when things open back up a little bit more and you can go and spend time with other residents, be able to be in community again, you can be a blessing to other residents. If you feel like we are in failure exile and we grieve for what never was, Perhaps we need to regroup, set a new goal, and set steps in motion to be able to achieve that goal. If your profession has changed by choice or by force, like farmers, first surround yourself with people that understand what you're going through. And then when you're ready, try to dream a new dream. When our communities have people move in that we don't know, be neighborly, wear your mask, and go out and say hi to folks. It really isn't the new family's responsibility to make you feel welcome. It's our responsibility as longtime members of that community to welcome new people in. And when our churches feel as though it is so different than it was in 1960 or 1970. First, we have to acknowledge that it isn't the cultural norm to go to church. That's not an excuse, it's just simply a fact. And second, it is by personal invitation that people are willing to come to an unknown church worship. So when was the last time that you invited someone to church pre-COVID? Right now, also, during COVID, is a great time to invite someone to join us for worship here, virtual worship. Share our website and or forward your email with a worship link in it to your friends and relatives that live wherever. And in the comfort of their own home, they can feel welcomed. A few weeks ago, I attended the Virtual Leadership Institute con uh, conference at the Church of the Resurrection, which is the largest United Methodist Church in the United States. I got to attend from the comfort of my own office. Pastor Adam Hamilton was talking about and sharing their experiences as only doing virtual worship. And he shared that many of his members have invited their sons and their daughters, their grandchildren, their friends, uh, who live outside of their church uh, area outside of Kansas uh, to join with them for virtual worship. There are people in Europe that he said that are worshiping with the Church of the Resurrection. As Church of the Resurrection is in Kansas, there's people in Europe and other parts of the world just simply because they've been invited to join with their loved one through virtual worship. Now is the time, friends, to invite your neighbors and your friends and your relatives to join us here in Cobb, in Montfort, and in Livingston for our worship. As God told the Israelites, the time is now. The time is now to start living, to start making this place your home, because even here, I will be with you. 
And as Psalm 139 says, which is my favorite psalm, as 130, as Psalm 139, 8 through 10 says, If I go up to the heavens, God, there you are. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there, God, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Amen. So go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> 